All right. Welcome back. We have an update from 22nd Century Group. Trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol XXII. It's an agricultural biotech company focused on tobacco, harm reduction, reduced nicotine tobacco, and improving health and wellness through plant science. Happy to welcome back Chairman and CEO Larry Firestone. All right, Larry, we're going to jump right in with your recently reported financial results for June quarter end. Um, since you're a turnaround business, give us a few highlights of your results. You bet. Good afternoon, Anna, and thanks for the opportunity to provide a further update since we uh, since we last met on the progress at 22nd Century Group. We released our second quarter earnings last week. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I'll point out a few of the key strides we've made in our turnaround efforts. So first, the P&L shows sequential improvement in second quarter of 2024 compared to the first quarter of 2024. As our revenue grew 23% to 7.9 million and positive gross profit of 600,000. We did benefit from a large one-time order of Spectrum low nicotine research cigarettes which happens about once a year. and uh, But these top line results have set a nice pace for us to shoot for to match in the latter half of 2024 as we begin ramping up on new CMO contracts and pushing VLN into distribution again. Our bottom line results similarly improved with the net loss in EPS substantially decreasing to 1.1 million and 30 cents per share respectively these results provide evidence that we're in line with executing the necessary steps to reach our goal to get the break even in Q1 2025. In addition, we focused on strengthening the balance sheet and in the second quarter alone, our debt and other liabilities reduction and corresponding increase in equity totaled over $10 million in a single quarter. Most of these improvements were accomplished using equity to avoid burning large sums of cash, allowing us to stay focused on cash being used on the growth side of the business and key strategies. And your business is centered around two different parts of the tobacco industry, product manufacturing and harm reduction. Give us an update on your contract manufacturing business and how it's going. Sure thing. Our CMO business, our contract manufacturing business, we call it CMO business, is developing nicely as we're offboarding unprofitable lines and onboarding profitable lines. Uh, this activity has somewhat of an opposite effect uh, near term as when we offboard, revenue goes down, and when we onboard new lines, revenues return. But in all cases, we're not only focused on the top line, but also focused on gross margin. So where is the new business coming from? We're seeing activity for both domestic and international CMO business in the current environment. The key difference here is that domestic business carries a high federal excise tax uh, and the export business is sans the taxes. So the ASPs between the two channels are vastly different. Um, volume increases, lower our DLOH per carton, our direct labor and overhead per carton, and this benefits all products that we produce across the board. So let me just comment, <clears throat> pardon me, that it's our mission to subscribe and consume 100% of our factory capacity to drive our revenues as high as we can and our drive our direct labor and overhead as low as possible, which will maximize our gross profit. And I see you recently made some changes to your organization. What changes did you make? Yeah, we made significant changes to our sales organization. Um, we added two former colleagues of mine, uh, Robert Manfredonia as our new executive vice president for sales and marketing in the lead position. Robert and his new second in command are aptly suited with an entrepreneurial approach of developing nascent consumer brands and getting penetration into new points of distribution in the market. Our points of distribution expansion had stalled at 5,100 points of distribution over the last 12 months. And we need far more than that to avail VLN in all of its forms to the market. So we're looking at our whole route to market strategy and tactics to return the growth we need to VLN. 
And then your harm reduction focus is centered around your VNL, VLN reduced nicotine content products. And the FDA has authorized that for sale. So share some of your strategy for increasing the sales in that part of your business. You bet. Well, just to be clear, we at 22nd Century have joined many other major constituencies on the attack on nicotine and nicotine addiction and the desire to alter the course of smoking in America and elsewhere as markets adopt. So we understand that once addicted, changing a smoker's smoking habits is a huge challenge. And we have created an amazing tool to help smokers. So through plant science, we have developed our own low nicotine tobacco strains. And our par product is called VLN. And it is the only FDA authorized reduced nicotine cigarette that's specifically designed to help smokers, adult smokers, smoke less. This also satisfies the smoker's dilemma of the oral fixation that comes with the hand to mouth orientation of smoking habit, uh, which gums, patches, and other nicotine reduction therapies do not accomplish. So the idea is by taking 95% of the nicotine out of the equation, smokers will have the choice by managing their nicotine intake and naturally smoke less. We have clinical data to back this up, but essentially remove the nicotine, remove the addictive behavior, uh, take control of your smoking habit. So our VLN product, the product itself, was launched into the market in 2021, and we had successful launch data and when we expanded and how we expanded, our growth stalled. Since joining in December, we've been assessing our distribution footprint as well as trying to obtain sell-through activity from the market, which has been a challenge given our current distribution channels. However, with the help of our rebate program, we're starting to get our arms around the flow of our points of distribution, and albeit slowly, our in-market knowledge is advancing. We've got a lot of work to do here. Uh, and the order flow to the market and our sales into, into distribution has been less than we expected. In January of this year, uh, we raised our prices on VLN and that drove a flux, an influx of, of orders and higher inventory into the channel, which has not burned off yet. And that created an air pocket on the back end. So we're currently burning through that inventory now uh, in the channel and we'll look to advance as we go forward. And that's why the order volume from us through the distributor, through the retailer and to the consumer hasn't normalized to a steady flow. So as you saw in our quarterly financials, we are now including carton counts in our numbers to help our investors understand the volumes related to VLN and the CMO business. With VLN, we're now adjusting our strategy to a multi-phased approach to offer an expanded set of products, which will begin to fill out a low nicot nicotine category in retail. Uh, with respect to our current VLN, as mentioned earlier, we're assessing all of our current channels and, and points of distribution to determine if we are maximizing our opportunity with the brand and the point of distribution. And those things include activation, tactics, placement, sell-through data. But unfortunately, we have found points of distribution in our system that have not been serviced by either our team or our distributors. Uh, and this obviously impacts sales. So Robert and his team are focused on this and we will drive effectiveness in the market with our current channels and any new channels that we bring on. Um, we're looking at adding distribution that is currently not serviced with VLN, but we have to clean up our own backyard first before we can move too far by adding new distribution. We plan on launching flanker VLN brands, which will be VLN products made by us and marketed under brands to open up the category. Uh, stay tuned on this. Uh, and then finally, the relaunch, the, the launch of the rebranded VLN with the help of Sandstrom Partners will include a new blend, new packaging and image, and a new go-to-market strategy, tactics, and activation. So in addition, we're working on international opportunities for VLN. 
we have reinitiated with our partner in, in Korea. This initiative was put on hold more than a year ago, and we've re-engaged with that partner and are organizing uh, the launch with our partner in Korea. Um, we're exploring other international markets as well. So essentially, we're waking up the market to a solution that exists and letting them know it's out there. But to me, it really feels like the initial launch of VLN. So I'll frame our VLN situation as follows. We've got to fix what's not working with our current channel and points of distribution and get the product moving. Uh, we've got to gain new channels and distribution. And we have to regain the momentum that we had at launch time in 2021. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to introduce the VLN flanker brands to the market and then launch the new VLN brand that we're working on. As you can tell, this is a long road to brand success, but we're advantaged because along with the current distribution, we now have a sales team that's up to the challenge. So I think we're, are we, are we, do we have time for any questions? Are we out of time? Or we are we out of time, Larry. We've got so many okay. questions for you. So we'll send them to you so you can answer our viewers directly. Perfect. But uh, if you have any closing remarks for our viewers today, the floor is yours. Yeah, I would just like to thank you for your time, uh, all of our investors and all the participants here. And thanks, Anna. You're always a great uh, host for us and vehicle for us to get our message out. So uh, I look forward to updating you all in the future. Wonderful. Thank you, Larry. We'll see you again soon. Okay, thanks. All right, everyone. Bye -bye. We'll be right back.